one street to another street, just like lots of alleyways does. So the, the word reserve has sort of got a different meaning to an alleyway. Uh, aren't we sort of paying for some, I'm not being rude now, Alison, for some inefficiency in the past that this was allowed to happen? Um, unfortunately, once we all got computers on our desks with aerial photos with cadastral mm. boundaries on, we realised that a lot of mistakes have been made in the past, mm. particularly out in the county. And, um, you know, there'll be, there'll be situations where there are houses that overlap mm. boundaries that mm. people were probably unaware of before. Mm. Yeah, mistakes were made. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. This is not the first situation in Kinloch where we've had to part with a piece of land. There was another one just around the corner on Kenrig Road where we actually ended up selling up selling the land because somebody had built his house on it. Mm -hmm. so, so it happens. So how come that didn't come to council? It did. It did. Yeah. Yeah. Several years ago. It's, taken, Several years it's only ago. just been settled so last year. You're still a part yeah. So, Alison, is there... Um, is there are other cases where we've given um, right of access or easements for the use of reserve? Because my concern... Not to my knowledge, no. 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 My concern really is that it still becomes his private property because the general public would feel that that's the driveway and that's his land. That's and, and that's how it looks at the moment. Yes. Um, personally, myself, I, I prefer, uh, if we've got to do anything, is either that he does move his garage and he does use his own property, or we sell the land. It's a sale and purchase, and he pays all, all fees necessary. I hear Councillor Hickling um, asking, or somebody else asking about precedence, and I'm going to call on my memory uh, from Councillor Kepa. I seem to remember in the last training we had a case of this in Turangi where we sold some land because the house was situated inadvertently in the wrong place. Is my memory right there or wrong? We, no, it's wrong. We've closed um, walkways down there previously uh, and sold the land to the adjacent landowners. Well, we, we, we had a problem down in Turing where a house was, was, was here. It was here. Was it Taupo? Yeah. yeah. It was yeah. up uh, uh, or somewhere, wasn't just it? Just off Rifle Range Road. Sorry, it's a Taupo issue. Yeah, sorry, just we off. We did have one before. Yeah, yes. sorry, Your Worship. It okay, look, it, it's up to the chairperson. I'll come back to you in a minute, Rex, um, Council Mincher, uh, to allow or not allow sometimes requests are made. Um, just for your information, councillors, the owner of the property is in the room. And the owner of the property has asked if she could speak for a couple of minutes. So I will allow you to speak for a couple of minutes. Ma'am, I'm not sure of your surname. I apologise. That's all right. It's Terry Brook. Welcome. And I'll give you a couple of minutes, uh, which I think is only fair. Yes, yes. Oh, just for webcam, best to be on the microphone. Uh, if you present to do council, I... that's where you do it because of our webcam and what have you. I'm used to standing in court, so... <laughs> <laughs> okay, um... Prior to us buying the property, I did actually contact Alison and um, we did have quite an extensive discussion, but I didn't agree to say we looked at um, you know, the options we could do and one of them was reducing the garage, but it's prohibitive in terms of cost. So there wasn't an agreement from my recollection of the, of the discussion with you. It was about what sort of things we could do. What can we do? Easement was one, selling the property, came back with a fourth in terms of a, a, a smaller easement. So that's just one thing I wanted to clarify. There was no agreement, verbal or otherwise, it was a discussion about what we could do. Um, we have recently built a fence, which is this one here. It is on the boundary, it's actually within my boundary or our property boundary, and it hits boundary between the reserve and our property at one point, it wouldn't even be more than 10 centimetres and it's just a point where we can turn around, I can actually show you where it goes on, on the map um, we have looked at all of the options that Alison gave to us and the easement was the most uh, reasonable thing that we could come to, just not me affected, it's um, three other people Okay, well that's fine. I'm going to allow the councillors to ask any questions of you if you uh, if you are willing to answer them. Councillor Dana. Yeah, hi, Terry. Was there any advice given from council, obviously, when you before you bought the property on 
on options that you could have taken, or was there any advice given from the property owner that was selling it to you, knowing that all parties, including yourself? We didn't yourself. know until we actually got the LIM report, which I've got there, that there was an encroachment. Um, and that's when I went to my account, like my lawyer, and said, you know, what do I do here? What, who do I contact? What do I, what do I ask? Um, because in all other respects, it's a great property, apart from something that's been there for 35 years. Um, incidentally, the former owner has actually maintained that land. He has pruned the trees, he has mown the lawn, and I've kept that up. So that side has never been taken care of by the council at all. Thank you for that. Mm. Councillor Lynch. My question, Terry, thanks for coming along. Was just then the lawyers advised you was be like whatever option there's gonna be some costs here involved yeah. to obviously to carry on and, yeah. and so um, so to clearing the matter up in the future, like it may cost more to buy the land and move the fence and it's done, but one day you're gonna to want to sell a property, it, it could be going through the similar process, we've got the same thing. That's why we that's why when I when I um, saw the LIM report I contacted um, Alison and talked to her about it. And it was, the council did know about it, um, but it had never been discussed. And what we want to do is try and clarify it up for everybody, like for us and, and for the council, so that it's sorted. It's either, you know, as an easement, it's on the title, but it's still the reserve, it's still reserve land. It's, it's just so that we can actually get into our property. And it must admit, they did buy it with those risks involved. You did buy it with we those risks. Yes. Exactly. So, and so, like, if, if it was more expensive option to move the fence and own the land permanently to move forward, would, would you accept that option? If it was more expensive to buy the land, buy sort of the fence. land. Well, that's really a decision for you. Just sort of, just but as an option. Yeah. That, I mean, um, yeah, it's really no. Just leave that question to one side. Um, yeah, please. That's a that's a, a decision you need to make as governance without being influenced, Councillor Henderson. Fair enough. Um, not a, not a question to yourself in particular, but there was a case just mentioned before of one of these that the council dealt with a few years ago, um, which was uh, and it was mentioned that it's just been resolved. Um, I was just curious what options we pursued and in, in solutions in that regard, and how long has that actually taken to resolve? I'm just trying to get an idea of how these things can drag out and the true costs to the ratepayer of dealing with these, because obviously that's been significant. The report, there was there was all the same discussions because yeah. it was a very similar situation yeah. and all the same options were there. Yeah, I think that the, the house was actually on the reserve. reserve. Yeah, so well, one on um, and it's all coming Tenry. to me now. Okay. It's on Tenry, on yes. Tenry Road. Okay, so that took so, on so that took five years. <laughs> um, oh, the, the, reason, well, the reason it took five years was because the one of the parties took a very long time to sign the sale and purchase it. There was two properties involved from memory, or yes. perhaps even three. Uh, there was definitely was two. two yeah. yeah, but when you say it took five years to resolve, it only took us one council meeting to resolve us. It's something that took five years to get into here, as I remember it. But the, the solution was yeah. sale and purchase, yeah? It was quite, it was yes. quite quick going through right. the council okay. process. It just took a long time to see. Yeah. 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 Was there any more questions for the lady um, that owns the property? Being none, thank you very much. Uh, now, we need to carry on. I think as much as uh, none of us like to um, give away our land or, or other the district's land and things like that, we do have a situation here where access is not being um, unduly or unnecessarily restricted. So really there's two options. If you want to be fair and move on and resolve a problem that's existed and raised its head from the past and how it happened doesn't really matter. But as Alison pointed out, as soon as we got computers and aerial photographs, we um, found a lot of anomalies and there's probably more to come. Mm. But it's a case-by-case -case basis, and in this case it's council and the private landowner. It's not two landowners, thank goodness. So we have resolves here. We can issue a, um easement or we can sell the piece of land in question. Personally, I, 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 either way is fine by me. I think selling is a cleaner way because it's done and dusted and it's not an easement over a bit of land. And, and I personally, if it was my land, I wouldn't want to be get someone get a limb report when I was selling and go explain this easement. I'd just rather have a freehold title and be done with it and 
I owe money to the bank, that's all that's on my title. Um, but I don't know, I'm open up to the floor and uh, leave it to you. Uh, Councillor Anderson? Just a question on, on option four, the possible sale. Um, seems to be quite a lot of steps involved here. And clearly we've got the recent experience of one that chose that option and dragged on for five years. But do we have an estimate on what the cost to ratepayers would be of pursuing option four? Um, it would be done on the basis that the applicant would meet the costs. So the answer to Mr Henderson's question is zero. The cost to the ratepayer... Apart from is staff time. Yeah, okay, thanks. But if the lawyers and certificate titles and that sort of thing are purchasers responsibility, yeah? Yes, yes, but it, it is, both processes are public processes, whether it's a grant of easement or whether it's a revocation of part of the reserve subdivision and sale of the land. Um, they're both public processes, so they need to be publicly notified and there is always the possibility of um, objection, which the council would have to deal with at that stage. So this is really only the first stage in the process. It's an agreement in principle to carry on with the process. It's certainly not an agreement at the end of the day to either grant the easement or sell the land, because you can't do that yet. Okay, okay so it's a publicly notified approach. So whatever we do here today, it's got to go out for public yes. consultation and submission. If somebody opposes it, it comes back to us. It has to be heard. And heard. Uh, and a decision made. And then at the end of the day, the Minister of Conservation or his delegated representative, which is usually the regional conservator, has the, has the final decision. OK, well, we're interested in moving things on. Does Councillor Anderson? Just to clarify, so if I'm understanding correctly, options two and four, the real cost would be in the public consultation processes, which are relatively the same in, in terms of the amount of effort and time and money. Yes, involved. probably. Yep, mm. thanks. Anybody else? Okay, does anybody want to move the suggested resolution or do they want another, or do they make, want to move another resolution uh, altogether? Okay, Councillor Henderson's moving the resolution as it's stated on page 10 bar two. So does he have a seconder? Yeah. He does, with Councillor Kirk. Uh, does anybody want to talk against the motion before I put it to the floor? Councillor Hickling? Yes, uh, Your Worship. Sorry, I, I will uh, vote against the suggested resolution. I think the most tidiest way of dealing with this, it's gone on for a number of years, is to actually sell the property to the um, adjoining property owner. Okay, and I'll be voting against the suggested resolution. Does anybody else want to speak against the resolution? Councillor Downard? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have to vote against it, mainly because that the, the, the owner knew that it was, when purchased, that it was on, on a reserve. And for, for that, I'd have to say that I'd like them to, to buy it as well, you know, the actual... So for clarity of all your fellow members, unless there's somebody else who wants to speak against the motion, am I hearing... I'll let you speak. I'm the same. I'd be against, along the lines of tidying up for the future, case by case basis. This, this is the way to tidy it up, so it's, it's done. Can, I, okay. Can I ask you people who are, would be against this motion that's on the floor at the moment, if this motion was not carried, would you support a motion to sell the property? Yes. Yes. Okay, so if nobody else wants to speak against the motion, I will put the motion. If the motion is lost, if it's one, it's one. If the motion is lost, I will be putting the motion to sell the property to the landowner. So I will ask all those in favour, put your hands up, please. One, two, three, four. There's ten in the room. The motion is lost. I will now ask somebody to put the motion forward, please, to sell the landowner the property in question. Do I have a mover or someone wants to put that resolution, please, especially one of you people that voted against? Excuse me, Mr. Mayor, point of order. Just because four voted for it doesn't mean to say all the others voted against it, does it? Someone might want to abstain. You, you didn't give the people a chance. Okay, point of order accepted. You were quite right. So I asked for those for that particular motion. You don't need to look up the book. He's quite correct um, in the standing <laughs> orders. <laughs> you are correct. Um, you are correct. So I will ask those against the motion to raise their hands, please. One, two, three. Four, five. Five against four. Motion is lost. So I go back and ask someone, please, 
in the spirit of the things to move a resolution. Um, Mr. Rawley, is there actually some wording here that uh, that the council prove in principle to grant to sell, sell to sell over. to sell over part of the marina terrace recreation route to allow vehicle access? Okay. Would it be the sale of part of, of the part, marina? Yeah. Of the reason principle the sale. Read the resolution of part out, please. Of, mm. So the council approve in principle the sale of part of the marina terrace recreation reserve. In the Fine. Okay. That and, and that the landowner pays all costs. That's your resolution. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Other than in uh, other than in house staff time and what have you. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. As long as we've got an understanding. So are you moving that motion? I'll, I'll move that motion. Your okay. Way. Is there a seconder to that, please, Councillor Johnson? Anybody want to speak against that motion before I put it to the floor? 